Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani. You're watching the International News Channel. On 23rd June 1985, Air India Flight 182 was en route from Montreal to England with its final destination to Delhi, India. But fate had something else in store. A bomb on board the flight caused it to disintegrate over the Atlantic Ocean at an altitude of 31,000 feet, claiming the lives of 329 people, most of them Canadian citizens and some British and Indian nationals. The largest mass killing in Canadian history was planned and executed by the Babar Khalsa terror group made up of Canadian Sikh militants, commonly known as Khalistanis. Their sole agenda is to establish a sovereign nation for Sikhs using land from both India and Pakistan. This year marks the 36th anniversary of the bombing and joining us to commemorate the tragedy is Sushil Gupta. Mr. Gupta is a senior strategics operations advisor of counterterrorism and national security with the RCMP. When Mr. Gupta was 12 years old, he had to endure what no child ever should have to, the loss of his mother. Mr. Gupta's mother was on board Flight 182 that fateful evening. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Gupta. Um, can you tell us about what the Canadian government did, or rather what they didn't do to support the victims of this attack? Well, this was uh, 36 years ago, and um, uh, uh, when the tragedy occurred, uh, 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 there wasn't a, uh, a initially a very great uh, Canadian response to it. Uh, our former government at the time, uh, I think, has, as has been found through the Ernie Inquiry, uh, treated this as, as, as if this were a, a foreign incident when... Uh, the conspiracy in this crime occurred in Canada, the, 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 uh, the criminal act occurred in Canada, and uh, a majority of the individuals who perished in the uh, uh, tragedy were Canadian citizens. So what do you think the government should have done instead? Well, I think families uh, would have liked to have seen a, 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 a collective response from the government uh, for, in terms of specifically victim support to the families, which means many different things, consular support, uh, uh, trauma support, uh, financial support, um, and investigative support, uh, but very much so on the victim support side of things. There are uh, a lot of things that happen to a family uh, when they lose a loved one, uh, especially overseas, never mind in Canada, and uh, they require support to uh, heal uh, 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 and, and move forward with their lives uh, and, and in order to respond to such a tragedy. So speaking of the investigative support, though, it took Canada 20 years to probe an investigation into the events that led to the bombing. Why do you think there was such a delay? I think there were challenges. I don't think they were prepared uh, at the time to uh, deal with an immense tragedy and, and, and to carry out an investigation with international, uh, with, it, with it occurring internationally, not just domestically in Canada. Uh, the, the, they also didn't have ties with the community in, in, in terms of building relationships, informants, people to come forward and uh, build evidence. This was certainly the, the first significant terrorism tragedy in our country. And uh, I don't think at the time they were prepared for that. Uh, thankfully, I can say that I think they are more prepared today. Yeah, so speaking of that, in your article with the Toronto Star in 2019, you discussed how the Canadian government failed you and all those who were directly affected by this attack. You said, and I quote, I am happy that the situation today had improved significantly and there are a number of good people in the government and agencies working to support victims. There is, however, still work that needs to be done. So can you tell us more about what aspects you think have improved already and what more you think needs to be done? So certainly I'm seeing uh, more in terms of professionally as well as personal coordination between government agencies, uh, both federal, provincial, or more than both, uh, federal, provincial, municipal, more involvement with uh, victim support organizations across the country. We have uh, integrated national security and counterterrorism enforcement teams across the country. And uh, there are initiatives like the uh, Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police has established a, a working group uh, looking to support, focusing on uh, uh, support to victims of terrorism and mass fatality incidents where best practices are being discussed, operational plans are being discussed so that we can better prepare our country to respond to, 
a, uh, a another uh, terrorism tragedy or incident and also to support victims uh, of terrorism and mass fatality incidents. So those discussions are occurring, Those pre that pre-planning is occurring uh, right now. So I think that's a significant improvement uh, over the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're aware that there's a memorial erected for the victims of the bombing at Toronto Lakeshore. Do you think having a memorial somewhere in the city is enough to spread awareness of the incident? Well, there's actually, a, a, I'll highlight, there are actually four memorials in the country, in Ottawa, uh, Montreal, Toronto and Vancouver, as well as a memorial in Ireland. And I don't know if I can say that they're enough, but I think they're important to remind us uh, that uh, extremism, that hate is uh, still part of our society, both in Canada as well as around the world. And we've seen tragic events in Ontario in the last two weeks inspired by uh, hate. Uh, 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 so I think that is important to remind us that first, we have to remember those victims, those innocent lives lost. Uh, 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 second, I think we, we have to be vigilant um, to ensure that we don't forget so that mistakes of the past, tragedies of the past, don't become tragedies of the future and that we actually learn from it. And I think memorials are one aspect uh, uh, to do that, to accomplish that. Every year, the families of the deceased hold services to commemorate the victims of these attacks. So can you tell us why these services are so important? Well, I think uh, with anyone who has who's sadly lost someone that they've loved, uh, 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 the families get together uh, because I'm going to say we we didn't experience a, a, a loss or a death on our own as individuals. It was collective grief, and so we gather to grieve together collectively. We also gather to uh, uh, remind Canadians uh, of this tragedy um, uh, to pr to foster some sort of resiliency in our communities, um, and, and, and regardless of how you define define communities. June 23rd is also uh, the National Day of Remembrance to all victims of terrorism, so we take a moment to reflect upon them as well. And we hope that uh, the message of vigilance, uh, of caution, of being prepared uh, stays with us and moves forward. It's, it's uh, in some way not just personal, but uh, in some way it's a way for us to uh, protect the future, uh, be it my children or other children. So how did this attack, after all these years, impact your life and the work that you're doing today? Well, I was a 12-year-old little boy when I lost my mom uh, in this tragedy and, and, and a number of other family friends. And uh, it certainly had a huge impact in guiding me uh, in my life forward. Professionally, it led me down a path to wanting to become a lawyer, uh, 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 working with, uh, formerly I was with the Department of Justice and then the Public Prosecution Service uh, uh, of Canada, and uh, currently now with the RCMP, where um, I specifically work uh, on matters involving counterterrorism and national security. So it certainly has had a huge impact for me, and I've seen an impact on many other families. But uh, 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 for me, the, the work that I chose is a way to honor my mom, uh, to provide a legacy in, in, in improving things, but uh, not just in the past, but also, as I say, uh, looking forward into the future to protect all Canadians, because I would never want any other Canadian family or family around the world to ever have to suffer as we did. And uh, so I'm able to do that as a, a, a victims of terrorism advocate, uh, but as well as professionally and substantially in the criminal justice sphere, working on these issues to combat these, uh, these ter terrible crimes of hate and extremism. So it's safe to say that the incident shaped you to be who you are today, right? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Uh, 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 you know, uh, others may have chosen different paths or so on, we, we, but we certainly all do find ways to uh, advocate on behalf of other victims of terrorism. That That is the, the best legacy I think we could leave to our, or give to our loved ones that we lost. No, I absolutely agree. And speaking of others, so how are you supporting the other victims? Well, I certainly speak with many. Uh, so we provide that, that moral support, that uh, grieving support to each other, uh, because we've all identified uh, with this tragedy, as I say, we, we lost loved ones collectively. Uh, Percy as well, I'm involved uh, do, uh, in my volunteer life with uh, the Canadian Resource Centre for Victims of Crime. So we support victims across the country. Uh, I, I'm pleased and honoured to say that I also perform uh, and carry out international functions, both uh, specifically in my personal life, uh, advocating on behalf of uh, 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 international victims of terrorism. Uh, in countries around the world. And then, of course, professionally, uh, uh, as, as we've talked about, I get to do some of that work as well. And, uh, 
you know, so working with victims is also a big part of my work because I have that experience um, uh, of what I've gone through over the last 36 years and the experiences I've learned from other victims. And uh, so that, 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 that in a way is, is how I would say we support each other. And speaking of the professional side, would you be able to speak a bit about what you're doing today to fight terrorism? Uh, all, all I can say is that I do work with the, uh, uh, I left behind my legal career uh, just a few years ago uh, to dedicate myself to work with the RCMP on uh, counterterrorism and national security. And that's, uh, I work side by side with investigators. I work side by side uh, with uh, victim support workers, uh, with police officers uh, and government officials. Uh, there again to protect our nation against uh, terrorism, um, uh, and, and I and I have an opportunity to 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 support those investigations tragically when they do happen, uh, uh, with the skill set, knowledge, and experience that I have. So, given the fact that this is one of the worst terrorist attacks in Canadian history, it is not very commonly discussed among politicians, media, and it's also not very widely well known amongst Canadians. Why do you think that is? Well, I think one most importantly is it has been 36 years, uh, 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 to be candid. And, uh, uh, you know, I work with investigators, for example, who are in their late 20s, early 30s, so they weren't even born when this uh, tragedy occurred. Uh, so time, unfortunately, uh, erases a uh, uh, memory of, of, of people. I think as well, uh, in turning back to the inquiry, so there was an inquiry that was held uh, in Canada from 2006 to 2010, and uh, uh, for 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 a number of multitude of reasons, uh, uh, the government didn't give it the attention that uh, I would say it deserved. But uh, I think lessons have been learned from that, and uh, this is becoming more and more part of the memory. I can say with the professionals that I work with in the law and security community, they are certainly aware of this tragedy, and they they, they take it to heart in terms of the work that they do carrying forward. So if you could tell people about this tragedy, what would you want Canadians to know? I would remind them that uh, terrorism is something that doesn't, isn't just an action that uh, occurs elsewhere in the world. I think we need to be reminded that uh, terrorism happens in Canada, that uh, uh, there are extremists in Canada, uh, and that we should never forget there were 329 uh, innocent lives lost in the Irony tragedy, plus uh, two innocent individuals who died when the second bomb blew up uh, at Tokyo's Narita Airport. Uh, so 331 mostly Canadian citizens that were killed in this tragedy and we shouldn't forget them. Uh, that's what I would want uh, Canadians to know and, and, and to know that uh, there are a number of people working to protect our country and uh, that I think we all need to remain vigilant going forward. And how do you think that the Canadian government can support the victims of this terrorist attack today? Well, I can tell you that uh, last year, for example, uh, the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police uh, uh, um, passed a resolution calling upon the uh, government to create a national centre to uh, support uh, victims of terrorism and mass fatality incidents. And, and, and that centre, I would hope, uh, uh, would coordinate uh, uh, resources between federal, provincial and municipal jurisdictions uh, to provide support needed to families pre plan practice those plans uh, uh, so that when a, uh, a tragedy occurs, uh, we are prepared as a nation uh, uh, to respond, to support, um, to assist. Uh, so, so that's something that I would, I, I would certainly like to see uh, uh, going forward. And I know that there are government departments working on that recommendation, I'm, I'm proud to say, uh, I'm happy to hear. Um, so, so that would be key, is remembering that it has occurred, it's not somewhere else. and. Uh, 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 ensuring as well, you know, being a voice as well for victims, being a voice to ensure that our our elected official and policymakers and uh, our governments uh, uh, are preparing to support us when we are all in need. Uh, because I think, you know, no one expects to wake up one day and have a uh, tragedy like this occur to them. It could occur to uh, anyone. And, uh, but we do, uh, so we can't plan for that. But what we can plan for is that we have the uh, uh, response mechanisms and the resources available to uh, support uh, in that time of need. I, I hear you and I completely agree and I want to appreciate, I want to thank you for taking out the time to speak to me today. So Sheila, I'm really, really sorry for your loss. Thank you so much. Thank you.
As Sushil just mentioned, June 23rd is recognized by the Canadian government as the National Day of Remembrance to all victims of terrorism. Let's take a moment on that day to reflect and remember those who have been affected by terrorism. Here are a few clips from the 2018 Air India Bombing Memorial Service. People, you will hear, time heals wounds. But uh, it doesn't apply to tragedies like this. I think it's important that we uh, remember and, and grieve with those uh, who are still suffering, uh, the families uh, that are left behind, friends, uh, the members of the community. But I think it's also important that it uh, be an opportunity for us to commit ourselves to making sure this kind of terrorist act that did uh, get planned and executed largely here in Canada, uh, that we never let this kind of thing happen again. And the thinking that lies behind it, that we make sure that kind of thinking has no place in our country, because it doesn't. It has no place in our way of life. It has no place anywhere in the world, but especially here in Canada. So I think that's going to require us to have events like this every year uh, so that we remember but also so that we make sure going forward that we uh, make sure this is not uh, acceptable in any way, shape or form, even thinking about it, talking about it or doing it. Uh, and that's, uh, that's why I'm here on behalf of all the people of Toronto who I know share that uh, view. And yes, it's true. <clears throat> Love reigns over all. Those wonderful words which are here and those wonderful words which were at the memorial in Cork. But it's also important that we remember that sometimes you have to fight to make love triumph. Well, it's a solemn occasion, of course, uh, every year when uh, the Air India bombing is remembered. It's very sad to know uh, that all of these names on the wall here that we commemorate, we share the pain from for their families that have lost them, uh, and all those families that are still seeking justice. And I, I, I sympathize with them, and uh, I think that their desire to seek justice is fair, and uh, we should still work towards that. But what we've lost is... is um, it's just horrendous. The incident was horrendous. That's all I can say. And I, it's one of the worst incidences in Canada's history. And I think all Canadians uh, feel sad uh, when we think about this event. You are watching the International News Channel. I am Simone Ivani. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos.